Yo, what is up everybody? Zan's Epic Kid here, back again with another Hetalia fan game called Spellbound. This was made by Tashi Mion. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, sorry. Tashi Mione on Tumblr. It centers around the Nordics. It features the self-insert MC here. So, self-insert main character. Um, seems like there's gonna be some wacky spell hijinks going on here. And I think so far this is like the second demo version that plays through the prologue in chapter one. So, yep. Without further ado, let's check out this game. I'm already impressed by the title screen. Please enter your name. Hmm. Okay, so usually I would go for, hmm, instead of just my actual name or screen name, let's choose one silly name for myself. Meowlasia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Oh wait, wait a second. My cursor is Venti from Genshin Impact. So how about Venti Chai Latte? <laughs> yes, let's do this. And yep, we're gonna go with this. What are your pronouns? Uh, she, her, he, him, they, them, other, choose your own. Um, I mean, my own pronouns are she, her. Venti, well, the one that I'm basing the plot around is he, him. Uh, or, hmm. They, them, also a viable option. Hmm. Actually, nah, screw it. Venti Chai Latte doesn't need to conform to the gender binary. You see, it's false dichotomy. So let's go with they, them for Venti Chai Latte. Smudges as as of fresh sunlight crawl through windows of crystal glass, tinting every available surface with delicately warm hues. Cool. They dance along my skin as I pass through their rays, and I bask in the familiar glow, the same sun as usual, or the same routine. Plucking a few scattered books left by the previous day's careless customers huffily from the weathered hardwood fo flooring, I stack them into my arms and carry them into the tiny yellow lit black back room. Back. Oh gosh, there's gonna be so much reading. <laughs> I can check them for damage after I finish setting up for the day. I'm loving the background art though, it's really nice. I like the graphics, the UI. Let me see. Yep, that's what the history looks. This is impressive for. A Ren Pai game as far as Ren Pai Italia fan games go. And I noticed that the magic circles, it seems like they have runes written on the side. So that's cool. And I think we can save here, so let's try that. Alright. I can check them for damage after I finish setting up for the day. Ooh, there's a chime. The bell hanging on the door chimes for the first time this morning, and I hastily shove the books into the nearest vacant bookshelf to be dealt with later. I'm gonna do my venti voice. I'll be there in a moment! I scurry to the front desk, taking a glance at the small tabletop clock resting on its surface. Huh, someone's up and ready to buy books as early as 7 in the morning? There in the main room, two new faces stand. One is a sullen-looking boy, who looks no more than 17 with a shock of silvery hair, idling by the fantasy section. Ah yes, the sullen fantasy lover. Iceland. <laughs> uh, nice outfit. The other, a slightly older, stony-faced man, engrossed in scanning the bindings of the far wall, with expressionless periwinkle eyes. Wow, this... Hmm. This prose is very descriptive. Yeah, Norway, Maki, yes. I can see a little curl here too. I like this art style actually. They make no notice of my entry, and I almost hesitate to call out to them. Can I help you two with anything? Are you looking for anything in particular? 
At the sound of my voice, the impassive man carefully slides the book in his hands back into its place among the utter dusty volumes. He looks over his shoulder to me. Ah! He's staring into my soul! Like, do you have anything on magic? Wow, that's definitely a question for the ages. Magic? It can mean anything from children's novels to actual guides on witchcraft, but I nod nonetheless. Yes, it would be in the fantasy section, over there by your companion. Muttering a soft thank you, oh, thank you, he wanders over to stand by the considerably shorter youth. <laughs> We're busting out all the, what's it called, epithets? Um, what was the word? I don't know, all the different descriptors for these people. Who moves aside for him as he approaches. I silently observed them as they scoured the titles before shifting my focus and returning to my own devices. After just a few minutes, I hear something being placed on the desk. I look up. The man slides a rather weighty looking time-worn book across the corner, and I have to contain my shock for the second time this morning. Painted onto the front cover in simple script are the words an advanced guide to demons and the creatures of hell? <laughs> what in the world would he be interested in this book for? <laughs> I don't know, guess he wants to party with the, with the demons and the creatures of hell. <laughs> or he wants to exorcise them. Like, I mean, he, he can't have... I see like three crosses here. Four crosses. So maybe he's some sort of exorcist dude. <laughs> or just into occult aesthetics. You know what? Mind your own business or ask him about it? Oh no, our first choice. Well, actually, since I want more dialogue characterization, I'll ask him. Normally, I just I just would let it go, but... <laughs> wow! Demons and the creatures of hell. Didn't know people were still interested in this stuff. What do you need it for? Planning a ritual tonight? I throw in a teasing laugh at the end, but I can't help but notice Fantasy Boy freeze all the way from the armchair in the corner. Just like, the fuck, bro? Why are you just going to buy this freaking occult book? The man hums in response, averting his eyes and reading a hand up to fiddle with a silver cross-shaped hair ornaments that keeps the blonde locks on the left side of his face pinned back. Probably somewhere over here. That, oh, there. There, <laughs> I see it. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> if I thought I had questions before, I have even more now. Uh, continuing looking at this, I do notice there's like the... I don't know, between the shadowy parts and the lighter parts, when there's a stark contrast, there's the... I don't know what it was called. The chromatic fringe? I know it was also called the terminator line or something, I don't know. That shows like how light scatters, that's pretty cool. I swiftly handle the technical de details of the transaction and hold the book out to him with two hands. He takes it and tucks it under one arm. Fantasy Boy! <laughs> That's his new nickname now! Fantasy Boy Iceland! Stands up to leave too, shoving his hands into his pockets. Ugh. Thank you! Remember, we take used books too, so if you don't like it, you can always sell it back! Have a good day and hope to see you again soon! I hear muted, you too, over the jingle of the bell before they file out of the shop and disappear into the early morning air. I stare at the door long after they've left. What a strange duo. Yeah. I mean, I also sort of have a cashier-like job, so... When people walk in, I'm like, Hello! And then, depending on what they want to do, just leave them be. <laughs> or talk to them about what they want to get. <laughs> then, uh... The rest of the day passes without any further incident, and ere long, a new morning arises. Unsurprisingly, I'm organizing the bookshelves again, picking up after careless customers, the like, the usual routine. Ugh, books. I wonder if I'd like working at a 
at a bookstore compared to where I actually work. It seems like an area I would be more interested in working at, but you know. The clock strikes seven in the morning, and I groggily suppress a yawn. Although I know I shouldn't, I consider taking a short break to rest my eyes. It's not like any more customers would show up this early. After all, the encounter that happened yesterday was surely a one-time sort of deal, right? Nope! You're... You just got dragged into the plot, main character. But I still can't help feeling a little unsettled at the mere thought of those two. The way the older one was so blunt, so casual about such a weird choice of literature, more specifically. <laughs> well, you know, you get those kinds of people. What if he's some sort of cult leader? What if I'm his next choice of human sacrifice? I mean, now that I've asked him questions maybe he might be like they know too much must destroy venti chai latte <laughs> enough get yourself together venti chai latte it was likely just some sort of stupid joke anyways pushing all thoughts of strange men and even stranger rituals aside i make my way into the back room to inspect the books i picked up for damage a crease in this one a feared few tears in this one Jeez, how can some people be so careless? Yeah, care for your books. Dang. I, I'm, I don't even live near a bookstore. You know what I would give to be able to go to a bookstore nearby? I work quietly until a familiar sound snaps me out of the zone. It's the bell on the door again. I snap the book in my hand. Oh, wait. Nah, I don't live near a bookstore. I can't just walk to them. I snap the book in my hands shut and hurriedly set it aside for later, scampering to the desk. Like, the bookstore I visit most regularly would be my university's bookstore, which is just full of a bunch of overpriced textbooks and school supplies, okay, and some drinks and snacks and hydro flasks and university merch. Not like the super broader type of bookstores with any kind topic. Then I see who's standing there and my usual cheery welcome dies in my throat. It's the same duel from yesterday! Unlike before though, the younger one looks a bit shaken. Despite his efforts to hide it, he does not make a beeline for the fantasy shelves like last time, opting to linger by the door restlessly. Mm. The other one, however, is expressionless as usual, but his eyes do not stop shifting, situating on the counter before swiveling to his periphery, as if he's expecting something to happen. I notice the book is tucked underneath his arm as he approaches the desk, and as he closes the distance, I make up familiar, simple lettering on his dull cover. It was the same book that had thrown my mind into such chaos the day before. Wow. Good morning, you two. I didn't expect to see you back so soon. What can I help you with? I would like to sell this back, please. I was careless. It wasn't the right one. <laughs> it wasn't the right demon summoning ritual book. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I'll take it off your hands then. The book feels heavy in my hands, and unprompted theories of what secrets its many pages contain gather along the edges of my consciousness. I'd be like, get that cursed shit out of here. But well, I wouldn't say it out loud, but I would just like place it to the side after refunding and shit. Curiosity's flame flickers to life within me, and I feel that same burning desire to ask about what happened materialize from its heat. Okay. It would be foolish to feel my surely unfounded cult leader conspiracy with what would likely be cryptic answers. But it is a book about magic and the two of them seem so unusually anxious. Yeah, I'm like, I would assume that they just, I don't know, tried to do a ritual and it should almost didn't go too well. They barely managed to seal whatever evil they unleashed. And they're like, yeah, nah, I'm bringing this back. <laughs> um, so either we can ask him about what happened or handle the transaction without question. No, let's be extra nosy. Because why not? So why exactly did you decide to bring this back? 
Didn't catch your fancy? I'll admit, the books about magic do never seem to get half of the interest the romance ones receive. The man shakes his head at that. No, nothing like that. It didn't have the correct spells, that's all. <laughs> it's not easy to maintain a neutral expression and prevent my eyebrows from rocketing upwards. What sort of weird spells was he looking for if a book called Advanced Guide to Demons and the Creatures of Hell didn't even have them? Once again, I'm forced to remind my- I don't know, maybe he's more of an illusionist? Narrator? Or like, a freaking- Maybe he specializes more in th thaumaturgy or whatever. <laughs> Wait, what is thaumaturgy? I forgot. Or like, teleportation spells, not like, you know, summoning evil. <laughs> Once again, I'm forced to remind myself to refrain from jumping to conclusions. I see. Well then, let me wrap this up for you. The cash register dings as I click it shut, and I provide the man with his newfound cash along with his receipt. There we go. I'm sorry it wasn't what you were looking for, but we have a few more books on the subject, if it still interests you. Maybe this time it'll be what you wanted? Yes, I'll look. Thank you for the help. With that, he rejoins his companion, who is still idling by the door, checking his phone every few seconds as if he were waiting for something. They begin to whisper, so softly I can't hear them despite the sleepy silence of the early morning. I think nothing of it until they begin glancing at me on occasion, and I notice that I've been staring! Catching myself, I snap my attention to desk's computer monitor berating myself for being so nosy and focusing my attention on scrolling through the current stock. While I work, though, I can't help but glance over to the book they just returned. All this trouble over a single book. Yeah, if they start glancing at me while whispering, I would then assume that, oh no, I really am the next target for their ritual. <laughs> Interest peaked. I make a mental note to bring it home with me tonight just to check it out. With that thought in mind, I return to my duties, and even though the day has just begun, I find that I am already beyond excited for it to be over. Oh, th the next day, I glance up from the counter, having heard something, and I see the duel filing through the door, empty-handed this time. Thanks, you two. Have a good day. Again, I discern the same soft thank you. Through the jingle of the doorbell, then the two are gone. The room feels foreign and strangely empty for a while, despite them having only been here for such a short while. Oh, in their wake. Never mind. Uh, it's like midnight. <laughs> I turn the return book over in my hands before bringing it into the back room to retrieve when I close up shop. Just what could this have in it? I ghost my fingers along the text on the cover gently as I set it down where I know I will not forget it. Though I've never been into magic, I have to admit, it is interesting. And those two have, had acted so suspiciously. Yes, I would take a look at it later. Okay, like, you're just gonna give it a quick skim, right? With that clear go in line, I figure I can finally focus on my work for that day and push all my restless thoughts to the back of my mind. And the day goes by as expected. People of all ages coming in, selling and buying books, not one of them as interesting or unsettling as that mystery man. Once I wrap up work for tonight, I make sure to grab the book before I set off back to my apartment. What the heck is that image? There's a freaking wolf eating carcass. That's kind of creepy. There's, I don't know what that is. Uh... Two stick figures and a bunch of notes. I like the modern looking apartment room. Dang, is that a Dell laptop? By the time I make it back home, I'm exhausted. Retail jobs are draining, especially with the odd people one may cross paths with. Closing and locking the door, I carefully place the book down on the desk in the room. Then I toss my bag onto the nearest chair. Oh, yep, I can totally read this. Um, oh no, I summoned evil! No! no, okay. I left the book with care, 
turning the front cover and delicately flipping through the pages as I let the pages flutter down one after another. I noticed a fair number of eye-catching, mystical symbols penned in thick black ink. Strange shapes and indistinguishable characters sure look like they belong in those stereotypical TV shows about witches and magic. I wonder what all this means. As the pages continue to fall into one another, I notice something that makes me pause. I carefully flipped over the cover of the book, making sure to guide it down with care. Upon its contents finally being exposed, I noticed what, that what had caught my attention was none other than the bookmark. Gently moving it aside, I absorbed the details of the pages. So I assume maybe they're, um, I don't know what that one is. This one, it's like the relationship between the sun and the moon and how it's woven into the universe. I don't know. On one page, there's a bunch of text that undoubtedly performs a spell of sorts. And on the adjacent page, there's a magic circle with various symbols. Yeah. Anyway, I like this person's wood drawing. Like wood art. <laughs> my brows furrow in thought and I feel an unsettling pit in my gut. On second thought, maybe this wasn't such a great idea. You think? I quickly retrieve my hand, but I can't tear my eyes away from the spell. The incantation makes little to no sense, but I notice that they do follow a pattern in rhyme, just like a poem would. Give me the booty. I want the booty. Damn that booty. <laughs> I'm Intrigued. I read over the foreign words carefully, subconsciously starting to mumble. <laughs> oh no, you're freaking reading this shit? To mumble the unfamiliar sounds under my breath. I wouldn't even read that shit. I just like skim over it, like see what each spell does, and it be like, okay, good. I guess that's the stuff that. They were too interested in. Woo. Oh, of course. You you make the book glow. <laughs> Good job, Venti Chai Latte. As I reach the final line, something catches my eye. The symbol on the adjacent page is glowing with a brilliant red hue. And I immediately flinch away from its ever-growing... Oh, shit. I, I banged the mic. Sorry. And I immediately flinch away from its ever-growing illumination. Just gonna drink to these creepy scents. Okay. That absolutely was not there before. What the fuck? First f bomb of the game. In a panic, I shove my hands under the book cover and try to force the book shut, but with no avail. The harder I push, the more it resists, and my arms start to grow tired after just seconds. It's like trying to force two magnets of the same charge together. Two magical, insanely strong magnets. Adrenaline surges throughout my body, and I slam the cover shut with all the force of my being. It groans in protest, but begins to close. And for a moment, I think... I almost think I won. Then, it surges back with just as much power. Arms finally giving out, I stumble back, release my grip from the book, and it slams back open. Before I can continue, the hardback cover hits the desk with a harsh smack. I'm thrown back, almost knocking over my chair as something emerges from the symbol. Whatever it is, it exudes a scorching heat. That's the same hue as the light radiating from the book. Cool. I throw my arms over my face to shield it from the heat out of instinct. Feeling sweat beat up, I peek through the cracks of my defense, trembling and my heart drops to the floor. Despite the fire, my blood runs cold. <laughs> What the fuck did you do, Ebs? Narrator? You summon a freaking skeleton... I don't know... Like, two-thirds seraph-like skeleton demon creature with biblically accurate eyes all plastered all over it. And horns. Wow, good job. <laughs> I must be dreaming. It has to be a nightmare. Because there's no way a beast like the one rising from the book exists in real life. The creature begins to speak. Or at least I think it is speech, but I can't make out a single word it's saying. 
its hellish voice is garbled, distorting every syllable beyond human comprehension. I try to back away to apologize for my crumpled space on the floor, but I can't move. The creature, no, the demon, turns to face me. Dimly, I register the fact that I am likely going to die, and the ringing in my ears reaches a crescendo. Oh gosh. I can do nothing but stare at it. Oh my gosh. With hazy tunnel vision, I cannot stop gaping. While my heart pounds, I close my eyes and pray that it will all go away. Bow of the Lord! Bow of the Lord! Get back! Ah! <laughs> Takes out Bible. Yeets it. No, I'm kidding. Okay, ellipsis. Oh, wow. A cracking sound echoes throughout the room. For some reason, I immediately think it's my bones, and then everything goes black. Well, that's one way to start a visual novel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The first thing I am aware of as my mind fights to reawaken is the pain. From the top of my head to the tips of my ho toes. <laughs> there was I about to say the tips of my hose? What am I Oh no. Everything hurts. The pain sears my brain, clawing into whatever my mind fights to form any thread of rational thought and ripping the strings apart. I can't open my eyes or get up from the freezing hard ground. And one, the one thing I'm able to make sense of and eventually stop trying. I don't know how long I spend lying in the darkness, phasing in and out of consciousness. Maybe I'm dead. Ma no, it wouldn't hurt this much if I was dead. And I wouldn't be hearing voices. Voices? Through the haze of my thoughts. I make out the crunch of footprints on snow and foreign curses. Then before I can process whether I'm in danger or not, I'm hoisted from the ground without warning. I gasp as the sudden contact sends a new wave of fresh pain shooting through my body and the arms gripping me loosen apologetically. Whoever is holding me mutters something and as they begin to move, I desperately attempt to open my eyes and get a glimpse of the stranger but to no avail. They shift and I feel something warm and heavy. A blanket, probably. Wrap around my body gently this time. The blanket is soft and warm and my body succumbs to new comfort against my will. Leaving my fate in the hands of the stranger, sleep takes me and I am dragged down, down into darkness by the weight of my own frozen limbs. Hmm. Okay. Yay. The second time I awaken, I thankfully have control over myself. Oh, this is a nice little room. It's so nice and cozy. Wait, is Hmm. Oh, this is a view of the bed. Okay. So I assume this mirror is angled downwards. My eyelids roll open with minimal effort, and I am able to see for the first time since I first blacked out. I prop myself up on one elbow to assess my surroundings, blinking rapidly at the brightness around me. Wherever I am, it doesn't look like I've been kidnapped and thrown in a dungeon. That's good, at least. I've been carried into a rather comfortable white-walled bedroom, tastefully decorated with wooden for furniture and quite a few plants, one of them dotted with tiny white flowers. If they are real, they're rather lovingly maintained. Hmm. Oh, it's you. My eyes come to rest. On a blonde figure standing by the door. He approaches as he notices me stirring, but stops when I shrink back. Fernland! Fernland! Okay. I want to ask where I am, who he is, but evidently having anticipated my confusion, he beats me to it. It's good to see you're awake! Don't worry, you're safe here! The stranger smiles at me, and I tentatively begin to relax. His blue eyes twinkle. I'm Tino. I've been checking up on you ever since we found you outside last night. 
For a moment, an unidentifiable emotion passes over his face. That's gone as it, as soon as it, it appeared. You were in the beginning stages of hypothermia. If you had been out there much longer, you might have died. Wait, what? I went out. Wait, the narrator went outside? But weren't they in the room when the freaking... I don't know. With that thought looming over our heads, Tino quietly seats himself in the armchair by the bedside and folds his hands in his lap. But I'm sure you have questions. I'll be happy to answer any you might have. Any questions that I have? Okay. First of all, who are you and who is we? Who are you? You said we found you. Who is we? Are there other people living here? Tino, looking rather pleased that I'm able and willing to speak, opens his mouth to respond and is abruptly cut off by the sound of heavy footsteps thundering upstairs. Wait, I recognize this song. Is this from H slash Mix Gallery? Or Mao Damashi? I don't know, one of the Japanese free music sources. My head swivels to the doorway as they barrel in the direction of the room we are in, and I can make out two agitated voices above the chaos. Tino stiffens beside me. I flinch as the door busts open and slams into the wall with explosive force. Two figures storm into the room, their voices clashing in the cacophony that makes my ears ache. Tino sighs. Dude, what the- Oh, okay. Dude! What the hell is your problem? In the doorway, a man with wild golden hair. Oh, there's Denmark. Oh, his hair looks cool. Tries to pull another man out of the room, and with my heart, and my heart stops as I realize I recognize his face. Oh yeah. Yep, dude that you met at bookstore. Now he pissed, and he's staring into my soul. Actually, all of them are staring into my soul. Hi guys. <laughs> he's the man from the bookstore. He locks eyes with me as he struggles to throw off the grip of wild hair. <laughs> so we got fantasy boy, wild hair, um, Tino. You know, you know he nice. <laughs> and his expression falls into a dangerous glower. What? What have you done? My stomach drops and I feel almost paralyzed again as he attempts to take a step forward. Wild hair holds him back. My throat dries up completely while I search wildly for an explanation, stuttering nonsensical sounds. Panic has stolen my words, steve my ability, ability to form coherent sentences as I gape silently. I don't know, dude, what the fuck were you doing with your freaking book? I see the man's fingers twitch, his muscles wound, and fear crawls up my body to wrap its icy fingers around my neck. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice Tino's lips snap into a rigid, joyless smile. He shifts almost imperceptibly closer to my bedside. <laughs> hey now, Lucas! He's a stop! You're scaring them! Tino's eyes flip to me nervously, mine returning the braver, and I can practically see the confusion bubbling beneath them. It dawns me that this couldn't possibly be anything he'd know about. This Lucas had told him nothing. A bead of sweat drips down my neck as the mystery man, as Lucas, burns a hole through my skull with his gaze, and I try not to focus on it as it slides uncomfortably down the contours of my back. Okay? So, you got chills down your spine from him staring intensely at you. You wouldn't be saying that if you knew what they did. Matthias, let go of me! Lucas's voice is now dangerous, deadly, calm, and the nervous butterflies in my stomach freeze in the bitter chill of his tone. The plant hanging above the man named Matthias's head suddenly became very intriguing as I avert my eyes, uncomfortable amongst such careful scrutiny. Just how much trouble am I in? The atmosphere shifts and hesitantly releasing the grip on Lucas's wrist. Matthias attempts to cut through the ice. He nudges Lucas with his elbow, glancing at me sympathetically. Dude! 
calm down. Just look at them. So, I guess what I did must have been... What Venti Chai Latte did must have been pretty serious, considering that Norway, a normally chill and motionless person, is now pissed. <laughs> he vaguely gestures over to me with a nod of his head, likely trying to remind me that I'm pretty much incapable of doing anything in my current state, which, although appreciated, splendidly backfires. Because his cold meter shatters and twists into a raging hellfire in an instant. Leaping from ice to flame effortlessly, he whirls on his heels to snarl back into Matthias's face. And he reels back, eyes blown wide. Okay. You don't know what they did! The words bounce loud and strong off the walls, and something in the room snaps. I don't know, why didn't you tell them what I allegedly did? So that they can understand the situation properly! Okay. Tino shoots up so quickly that his armchair flies backwards, expression darkening into something wholly opposite to the soft smile he gave me when we first met. It changes so rapid that I barely notice it. Get out! Apparently nobody moves fast enough for him in the seconds that follow because he repeats himself more forcibly this time, somehow managing to look down his nose at the two men by the door despite his shorter stature. Yeah, Finland, he, he's small, but he fierce. Get out! They obviously don't know what's going on! I don't know what happened and I don't need to! What I do now is the two of you need to leave! For a moment, Matias seems about ready to object and opens his mouth to do so, but after another glance at Tino, he looks away and decides against it. Whoever Tino is to these people, it seems as though both of them knew better than to go against him. Ah, <laughs> Lucas strains himself and one last glare sweeps past Matias into the hallway with not a word. Okay, well, that happened. <laughs> And I need some water because my throat is dry from reading all that stuff.